Tonight, your commute tomorrow morning could be messy. The entire GTA is under a special weather statement. Uh, a whole arsenal of equipment ready to go and, and ready to respond uh, as soon as possible. The salt trucks and plows are ready as winter reminds us it's not over yet. Plus, Airbnb answers. The company says it is beefing up security measures after a shooting at a downtown rental left three men dead last week. And... The Raptors making history tonight, winning their 12th straight game, a franchise record. Good evening, I'm Mike Wise. Be prepared for a rough commute tomorrow morning. A winter storm is making its way to the GTA at this hour. You may already be seeing it in the Milton area. Environment Canada issuing a special weather statement saying the storm is expected to bring snow, wind, ice pellets and perhaps even freezing rain. Angelina King joins us now live from Eastern Avenue where the city stores its winter storm equipment and Angelina some prep has already begun for the storm. Yes, it has. The city has actually been tracking the storm for a few days now. So to prevent the roads from becoming really slippery, the city applied liquid salt to major roadways, expressways, hills and bridges. That helps uh, from the snow sticking to the road. Now, the city says it'll be sending its salters out very shortly. It's not snowing where I am right now, but within the hour it likely will be. So that's when they will hit the roads and then the snow plows will go out likely around midday tomorrow. The city says once there's two Two centimeters of snow on the ground. That's when the plows will be on expressways. Five centimeters, that's when you'll see them on major roadways. And then eight centimeters is when they start working on the residential areas. Now, the city also says that throughout this storm, it'll likely be using between 10 and 12,000 tons of salt. And it says that there's about 1,500 people ready to go at any given notice and 1,100 pieces of equipment ready to tackle this storm. A whole arsenal of equipment ready to go and, and ready to respond uh, as soon as possible. This is a pretty typical storm uh, right now. We've, you know, we've seen forecasts anywhere from 5 to 15 centimeters, depending on where in the city you are. Uh, but, you know, like I say, the, uh, the salt trucks will be ready to go tonight. So both commutes in the morning and in the evening will likely be pretty messy, especially in the morning because the bulk of the snow will be coming overnight tonight. So you'll likely be brushing off your cars in your more in the morning And the city is encouraging people to not drive if possible, walk, take public transit, work from home if you can. And if you are out on the roads driving, cycling or walking, the city is reminding you to be safe, look out for one another and plan your commute now because it's likely going to take quite a bit longer tomorrow morning than usual. Mike? Always very good advice. Thanks, Angelina. Well, let's get an update on the conditions with meteorologist Nick Cernkovich. We're under a special weather statement right now. Yeah, we are. That's right, uh, Mike. Us and everybody along uh, the shorelines of Lake Erie and Lake Ontario, and that's what it looks like on the map there. Uh, generally speaking, snowfall totals about 5 to 15 centimeters of snow. Ice pellets mixed in some areas. The risk of freezing rain in some areas and poor travel conditions as well. How does it break down? Well, for us, uh, a lot of it coming through the overnight. By tomorrow morning, you're looking at 5 to 10 centimeters of snow on the ground, depending on where you are. Then it sort of tapers off, and we expect to see snowfall pick up again as we head through tomorrow afternoon and evening. So all told, 10 to 15 centimeters, but it comes over about a two-day period. There's a look at the next 24 hours. We're going to have more details on this on timing and location of the storm coming up in just a bit. Okay, thanks, Nick. You bet. And with cold weather, any Raptors fans heading outside tonight to celebrate have to ask themselves, what about scarves? The fashionable Raptors setting an all-time franchise record winning streak tonight. Pascal, Lowry, a pocket for the win! Bucket and bucket! It came right down to the wire. Toronto coming from behind after letting an early lead slip away. We will have full game highlights later in sports. And there's no school tomorrow for public elementary students. It's not a snow day, it's a strike day. A province-wide strike, in fact. Farah Morelli now with how parents are coping. It's lunchtime at Ogden Junior Public School. But tomorrow, things here look a lot different. Elementary school teachers will be on the picket lines for the first province-wide strike. Talks between the Elementary Teachers Federation of Ontario and the government are again at a standstill. We have absolutely no option. We could have had a deal on Friday.
The people want the parties to start acting, and we stand ready to negotiate. The mediator knows this. Rotating strikes already started in January, and now fatigue is setting in for parents like Cindy C., a single mother who works shifts at a restaurant. Because sometimes it's hard that if I say, I can I have the day off because I have to stay home to take care of my daughter, I have to find one to, to cover my chef. So it's kind of, it's frustrating. That fatigue exists no matter where your politics lie. Uh, I think in the next couple of weeks, I'm going to get really tired of it. I, I, I have been supportive. I have friends that are teachers. I do support their position. Um, but I want my child to have an education. I hope that they can come to some sort of agreement soon because it's definitely hard for parents to figure, to figure out. And it's not just parents that are feeling the fatigue. We use this a lot for carnivals. The calls have been nonstop at the Active Kids Zone in North York. It hosts birthday parties and holiday camps. Now, it's routinely running strike day activities. How has it been for you guys? It's hard to rush it all together because you're trying to get all the pieces lined up. Um, so answering the phone calls, booking the staff, um, pulling the activities together, it's, it's, you know, and every time we get a new announcement, we have to start it all over. With more strikes scheduled for next week, that scramble is expected to continue. Right now, no talks are scheduled between both sides. Farah Morali, CBC News, Toronto. Airbnb announced today it will be beefing up security measures on its home sharing platform. It's all sparked by that shooting at a downtown condo rental that left three people dead on Friday. Lorena Redekop has the details and the reaction. There's no question these changes are connected to the shooting at an Airbnb in a downtown Toronto condo. Our thoughts are with Joshua, Jalen, Tyrone. Uh, three young men lost their lives uh, on Friday night. The three men killed were 19, 20 and 21. Now the company is tightening rental rules. No one under 25 across Canada will be able to rent a home in the area they're from. Our research shows that those incidents involving unauthorized parties um, do significantly over-index with people under the age of 25 doing unhosted stays within the communities that they live in. Renters who've received at least three positive reviews will be exempt. In the past year, shots have been fired at multiple Airbnb listings in the Toronto area, including a mansion on one of the city's wealthiest streets that neighbours say was a party home. Another change, a 24-hour hotline for neighbour complaints starting Monday. Things will still happen. I'm not going to sit here and tell you that uh, things are not going to continue to happen, but what we're trying to do is mitigate Airbnb will also partner with a doctor's group concerned about gun violence. Details are unclear, though the company is giving them $300,000. Our gun fatality rates in Canada are about five times less than the U.S., so we are better than the U.S. However, we're also five times greater than the United Kingdom and um, Australia uh, and the Netherlands. So compared to the other economically developed countries of the world, Canada has a problem. That's a very, very, very cheap approach to buying goodwill. Some say the changes won't do anything. If I would be 25, I would have my friend who's 26 book the, book the place and then we would have a party. Like we bring 20 people and we have a cheap party place. The ongoing pilot will come into effect before the end of the month. Lorenda Redekop, CBC News, Toronto. Well, scare for some students and parents near Lawrence Avenue and Markham Road today after reports of a gun being fired behind Cedar Break Collegiate Institute. Now, this happened just after 1 p.m. The school went into lockdown and seven others in the area went into a hold and secure. Police found multiple shell casings in the parking lot as well as a car with bullet holes. No one reported any injuries and there's no word on any suspect. And a man died in a shooting at a bar near Danforth and Greenwood early this morning. What I can tell you is we're looking for multiple uh, suspects, at least two and possibly three, who fled in a motor vehicle uh, after the shooting. Um, really, that's all the information I have at this point. Now, police say it happened sometime around 3 a.m. When they arrived, they found a man in his 20s who'd been shot several times. An ambulance rushed him to hospital where he later died. Police haven't released the man's name. They're asking anyone with information to give them a call. At the Kalen Schlater murder trial, the court heard from an undercover officer who was placed in the cell next to him after police arrested him for the death of Tess Ritchie. 
He testified Schlater talked to him about his sexual prowess with women and his encounter with Richie on the night of her death, claiming when he left her, she was still alive. Adam Carter has more, but first a warning, some of the details in the story are disturbing. Court heard that Kalen Schlater is a pretty talkative guy. The officer testified that when they were locked up together, Schlater boasted about his ability to pick up women. He said Schlater told him he had slept with over 40 women and that girls beg him to sleep with them. The officer said Schlater talked about being a nude model and said he sometimes slept with art students who drew him. He also said Schlater told him, sometimes you have to push the boundaries with women to see where it goes. Later, the officer says, Schlater asked if he had ever heard of the name Tess Ritchie. Her body was found at the bottom of an outdoor stairwell on Church Street in 2017. Investigators say Schlater's DNA was found on Ritchie's pants and bra. The Crown says she was strangled. According to the officer, Schlater told him the two met at a club called Cruz and Tangos. He said they were dancing and making out. Later, Schlater allegedly said, they ended up in a stairwell. Schlater told the cop he wanted to have sex with Richie, but Richie said she couldn't because she was on her period. Schlater allegedly said he was upset because he wanted to have sex with her. The officer testified that Schlater said he then left her alone at the bottom of the stairwell. The officer said, Mr. Schlater said he was drunk and something could have happened, but he doesn't remember and he doesn't think he's capable of doing it. Schlater also allegedly told the officer that detectives showed him pictures of Richie's body. Schlater told him he pretended to get emotional, but in reality, it didn't bother him at all. Schlater appeared to cry in court Tuesday when images of Richie's limp body were shown on screens in the courtroom. The Crown hasn't yet finished with the undercover officer's examination in chief. He'll be back up in the witness box tomorrow morning. Adam Carter, CBC News, Toronto. Vandalized and stolen before they've even issued their first ticket. I'm Natalie Collada with the theft of speed cameras in the city. That story coming up. Bad weather is delaying the plan to airlift Canadians stranded in the epicenter of China's coronavirus outbreak. The crew of the government-chartered plane is currently on standby in neighboring Vietnam. We have had to delay the flight by about 24 hours. This delay caused us to miss the narrow flight window the Chinese authorities are providing to countries who wish to evacuate their citizens. 211 passengers will be able to board that first evacuation flight from Wuhan. Officials say they have also secured a few dozen seats on a U.S. plane that will depart shortly after that. 373 people have so far requested assistance. Those on the flight will still need to be screened and cleared by Chinese health officials. Once the plane lands at a military base in Trenton, the evacuees will be quarantined for two weeks in separate rooms. But family members will be able to stay together. 
And the coronavirus outbreak has thrown an unexpected twist into some Canadian vacationers. In Yokohama, Japan, 250 Canadians are stranded on a quarantined cruise liner. 20 passengers on that ship have tested positive for the virus. And we're learning tonight that two of them are Canadian. Those people will be taken off the ship and transported to hospital. All other passengers will remain on board under quarantine for 14 days. And Ontario's opposition leader is calling on the Ford government to pause planned reforms to public health funding all in the wake of the coronavirus outbreak. We know this event is not yet behind us and we need to remain vigilant. I'm asking for the government to conduct a review to determine what provincial funding and resources will be needed to keep Ontarians safe in the future. The Ontario government announced changes to public health funding in their 2019 budget, cutting their costs and requiring municipalities to pay more. They also announced plans to consolidate public health units and ambulance services. Horvath is asking the government to restore public health funding to 2019 levels to allow workers to focus on fighting the outbreak. She also wants the province to study whether the health system is adequately funded to fight a future pandemic. A spokesperson from the health minister's office said the province is prepared to respond to the coronavirus. Well, you may have noticed that photo radar cameras are popping up around the city. The cameras record vehicle license plates and send out tickets to speeders. Now it's hoped they'll cut down on the number of deaths on our roads. But the cameras are also now becoming a target for thieves and vandals. Natalie Collada explains. Before it could even take its first picture or issue the first ticket, a city pilot speed camera like this one was vandalized and four others were stolen. We don't want to issue tickets, frankly. This is not about generating revenue. This is about saving lives. Cameras like this one are part of the city's Vision Zero plan. 50 of them scattered across the city, often in areas next to schools, all in an effort to stop the alarming number of road deaths. Speed uh, is a factor in, in one third of all serious injuries and fatalities that, that occur on city streets. In Toronto last year, 42 pedestrians were killed. Four have died so far this year. And along streets like this one, neighbors say drivers need to slow down. Traffic is very rash in this area. And so stealing and damaging the cameras, the city says, is no joke. Moving a tool to help us, then that's uh, that, that you're potentially removing uh, or getting in the way of a, an opportunity to save a life. The speed cameras are meant to be moved to different areas, and so they're not secured to the ground. They are heavy, though, weighing nearly 800 pounds, and their shape and size has some in this neighborhood wondering if they were taken by mistake. Initially, I walked by at night, and I thought it was maybe something that someone curbed. <laughs> For the recycling, the guys can pick up old refrigerators, old stoves and stuff like this. I thought it was that. The vendor in charge of the cameras is also paying to replace them. The city says it expects to have all its speed cameras back up and running next week, with warning letters now being issued to speeders in the mail and tickets following in April. Natalie Collada, CBC News, Toronto. Well, they squeaked out that franchise record. A historic win at home tonight against the Indiana Pacers. It was a nail-biter. We'll have your game highlights after the break.
The weather update is brought to you by Train, the most reliable heating and cooling brand. It's hard to stop a train. You know, the Raptors looking to set a franchise record tonight. 12 straight wins as they host the Indiana Pacers. Serge Ibaka finishing with a nice dunk. It was plays like this that had Toronto up by 10 after 12 minutes, but they saw that lead evaporate in the second. T.J. McConnell leads it for Justin Holiday. Buries a three here. Pacers with a 15-point lead at the half. Raptors would climb back in the third and the fourth. Pascal Siakam causing a turnover. He attacks right up the middle here, goes up strong, lays it in. Toronto trailing by two. Then with 30 seconds left, Serge Ibaka takes a pass from Lowry. Ibaka nails a three-pointer there. The defense holds off the Pacers in the dying seconds as Toronto wins by one point, 119-118. And the Leafs in New York, Michael Hutchinson in the net for an injured Frederick Anderson. Leafs get on the board first. John Tavares scoring off a rebound from Willie Nylander. Tavares' 20th goal of the season. But the Rangers would soon go up 3-1 to one after just 20 minutes. Second period, Andreas Johnson behind the net here feeds one to Austin Matthews, who was there with the backhand. That's his 38th goal. But less than a minute later Hutchinson without his stick after falling on the ice he gets it back from Travis McDermott just in time for the Rangers to get another one past him they're back up by two at this point Matthews would get a second goal in the third his 150th of his career but the Rangers also add an empty netter as they win 5-3 and thousands of people gathered on the streets of Kansas City today for a Super Bowl victory parade some of them had camped out overnight to reserve choice spots along the route Look how much room there is for the traffic to go. The Chiefs defeated the San Francisco 49ers 31 to 20 on Sunday. The franchise last won the championship in 1970. The Chiefs' current roster includes Montreal's Lawrence Duvernay Tardif. He is the first doctor to play in the Super Bowl. After the game, he said it was an honor to win for Kansas City fans and for his supporters in Canada. Nick Cernkovich is back now with his extended forecast. So if it's not snowing where you are right now, it soon will be, and it's just going to keep on snowing. Yeah, and that's really the name of the game here, Mike. It's it's not one big heavy snowfall event. It's a prolonged snowfall event over Thursday and even into Friday as well. So that's part of our weather headlines. Our special weather statement is we talked about snowfall all the way through uh, Friday. And then in behind the system, much colder temperatures are on the way. In terms of the snowfall, uh, the bulk of it falling tonight, and it depends where you are, but uh, areas down around uh, St. Catharines up to uh, about Hamilton and Burlington and Oakville, uh, seeing the heavier amounts tonight, upwards to about 10 centimeters. For the city of Toronto, about five, six centimeters by tomorrow morning but all told, 5 to 10 by the time we're done with tomorrow afternoon. Because as it sort of tapers off tomorrow morning, we get another round of sort of lighter snowfall into the afternoon. And then it tapers off again. And then Friday, a little bit more in the way of light snowfall in behind the system as a cold front sweeps through. So again, about 10 to 15 centimeters of snow, but it comes over about a two-day period. You will have to shovel, though, tomorrow morning. There's a broad look at what you can expect. Most of this sort of... Um, ice pellet mix is really going to stay to the south of us. However, some areas, especially along the lake, could certainly see it. By tomorrow morning, this is what it looks like, generally speaking, for numbers, uh, 5 to 10 centimeters. Then we see we get a little bit more throughout the afternoon and then a little bit more as we head into uh, Friday and Friday afternoon as well. So that's kind of how it breaks down for us. Southwestern Ontario for tonight, not uh, in the clear at all. We're looking at snowfall down here as well. Same story in the neighborhood of about 10, even 15 centimeters of snow. Wind chills in the minus double digits. By tomorrow, highs of minus 2 degrees and still some tapering snowfall for tomorrow afternoon across uh, southwestern Ontario. Golden Horseshoe, same story tonight though. Temperatures down to minus 6. Wind chills of about minus 12. Tapering snowfall for tomorrow, but again, some light snow continuing on and off throughout the day tomorrow. Now, into the next five days, here's how it plays out. There's your snowfall through Friday. Saturday, we've got sunshine, but look at these overnight lows uh, getting really cold as we head into the weekend. Not a warm-up until Monday. I'll need Monday. to shovel when I get home. I'll shovel when I wake up. I'll get shovel when I go home tomorrow night. That's Just right. And luck. how about Sunday as well? Okay. Thanks, Nick. <laughs> you bet. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> oh,
So what has this doggy so riled up? We'll tell you after the break. I'm kind of afraid to introduce this next item for fear that I might be having the same effect. Apparently, CBC's local newscast in New Brunswick causes at least one viewer to yell at the TV. <laughs> Casper is a one-year-old yellow lab in New Brunswick. His owner doesn't know why, but he always howls when the local supper hour news comes on. Apparently this doesn't happen during any, any other TV shows, nor does his owner know if Casper is expressing his opinion about the message or the messenger. So let me know if I'm keeping your dog up or putting your cats to sleep. That's our newscast for tonight. Tomorrow, as you're shoveling snow, keep in mind, it's Bob Marley Day. There's a special concert in Toronto tomorrow to mark his birthday, and one of the reggae musicians taking part will be talking about it on Metro Morning. You can hear that just before the 8.30 news. I'll see you back here tomorrow night at 11. Good night.